Hello friends, welcome to Coding Droplets tutorial series. So in this video, we are going to see how we can send email in .NET C Sharp. Also we are going to see how we can do this email functionality in our application in a more efficient way. So in your application you might be having requirement for sending automated emails let's say you're having an option for good password in your application so if your users forgot the password to log in to your application normally in all applications we can see an option named forgot password so when they click forgot password they have to enter the email id with which they have registered and automatically we will send a password reset email to that particular email id so let's take that as an example. Now uh, let's check how we can do this in a more efficient way. So first I will show you how we can uh, send email in C Sharp. Then later on we will see how we can do it in a more efficient way. Okay. So for sending an email, now I have, you can see some code here. For sending an email, it is pretty an easier task. So just, okay, I will explain about this later. So first for sending an email, we need to declare an SMTP client. Okay, so for the SMTP client, we have to mention the host, SMTP client.host is equal to the SMTP host name, then the port number, then uh, uh, we can mention whether we need to enable SSL or not. So if you don't need the SSL, you can just mention here as false. So now here I'm using enable SSL is equal to true. Then uh, SMTP client .use default credentials is equal to false. Now I'm mentioning the credentials for authenticating the email address to, from which we need to send the email. So here, we are sending the email from test at the rate mymail.com. This is a sample email address which I have given for the demo. So here what we need is we need to mention the email address from which we have to send the email and we have to provide the password for that particular email address. Okay. Now, uh, so what I have done is now next we are going to declare mail message. So mail message, in, while declaring mail message, we can directly give from address and to address as parameters. So from address I have declared here, from address is equal to new mail address. And uh, this is the from mail address, test.mymail.com. From this email, we are sending the email to the user, okay? So uh, after mail address, you can key, uh, you can see I have used test.myemail. So I will explain what this is. So here we can provide a display name. This is not mandatory. You can give just the email address that is sufficient to send the email. But if you need to provide a display name, so display name, if, uh, if the user receives the email, they will be they can see this display name instead of a uh, raw email address. So here you can give your application name or whatever it is. So I'm just giving test my mail here. Okay. So that is that will be the display name once the user receives the email. Now to address also here also we can use the email address and a display name. So here you can give the user user's name, a normal full name or something. So uh, that will be the display name of this particular email address. Okay. And next we are declaring the mail message. So mail message we are declaring with from address and to address as parameters, which we have already declared here or initiated here. And mail subject, we are giving it as password reset. So everyone knows what is a mail subject is. And mail body, uh, here I have used a variable email content so that I will explain what is email content, what I've used here. So for that, I need to explain you about EaseBody HTML. So EaseBody HTML is basically we are assigning 
whether the body content of this email should be a HTML content or a normal text content. So if we need it as a normal text content, we can just give it false here and just we can use the text content directly here. Uh, say uh, your password is or your new password is something like this. Okay. But here, normally we used to see in most of the applications, uh, we will get a well formatted email like with their logo and uh, with some messages and it will be well designed. So that is normally an HTML email. Okay, for that we have to use e, uh, is body HTML is equal to true here and instead of giving it like this, I'm uh, uh, giving email content. So now I will explain what is email content. So what I'm doing here is I have already created a HTML email uh, content in the uh, and it will be placed inside the application somewhere in some folder. So here what you can do is you can give the file name or the complete path of that particular HTML file here okay and uh, using file dot read all text we are reading the entire HTML content from that particular file okay and in that file so wherever we need to modify so uh, I, I in that file I have used this particular text in order to replace it whenever we are sending an email so in that file, instead of uh, uh, showing uh, in the HTML file, I have mentioned uh, uh, curly braces, curly braces member underscore name, and I'm closing the curly braces. Now, this particular text will get replaced by the name what we have given here. So here you can give the user's full name. So it will be something like hello uh, user 001. So in the HTML, I have given like it like hello curly braces curly braces member name. So that text will get replaced here. Okay. In the same way, I have used some membership ID. So if you are having some ID or code something in your application and you need to mention it in your email, that also you can include in your HTML file and replace it like this. Then email if you need to mention the user's email address, that also you can do. And uh, if you need, uh, sorry, uh, and uh, in the forgot password email, you need to mention the new password, right? So that also I have used a text like this and I'm replacing it with a random password. So here, here you can generate a random password and uh, say, uh, hello, Adrid. So this is the random password. Then I just replace it with the random password here. So automatically, this function will uh, read all contents from the HTML file from the path which we have mentioned and once it got the whole content it will replace the content with uh, the values here what we have mentioned so member name will be changed to this membership ID will change to this email will change to this new password will change to this okay and this particular email content we are using it as a email body okay then we have a priority uh, value we can assign a priority value so here uh, we have multiple options priority is equal to low normal high so uh, if it is a very high priority email you can give it as high okay then finally we have to use smtp client dot sent of mail message so smtp client is this object dot sent of mail message so this is enough for to uh, send an email. Now, here there are some more options I will just show you. So now two address, I'm just removing two address here. Okay. Fine. <clears throat> okay, I'm just declaring mail message here. Now mail message dot from is equal to, I'm giving this from address which we have declared. Okay. Now if you need to send the mail to multiple addresses so that we can do it like this mail message dot to dot add and here you can use okay first time using two address here 
okay now if you have another mail so for example let's say to address two so that is user two dot my email dot com and the user zero zero two so this one you can add it here so now there will be two two addresses the mail will get sent to both of these address okay in the same way we are having option to add cc so if you need to add cc to another mail let's say uh, cc address one so this is user three okay so you can add it here fine again if you need one more cc address you can add it like the cc address two is equal to user four and add it here cc address two here in the same way you can add the uh, bcc address as well bcc dot add uh, say i'm copying this and bcc address one so this is use of five okay so this way we can add addresses to the mail message okay so this is the code to send emails from a C sharp dotnet application hope you got the logic anyway this is very simple now we are going to discuss how we can send emails or we will be having as I mentioned before we, we will be having requirement in our application to send multiple automated emails like forgot password or uh, invoices for example if you are having an e-commerce application and your customers purchase something from your application automatically you have to send an invoice email to them so this kind of several automated email requirements will be there in your application so let us see how we can do it in a more efficient way so that is basically a flow which uh, uh, we can use to make the email service in a more efficient way so let's check how we can do this so as I told uh, this is basically a flow that we are using to make uh, the email service in a more efficient way so I will just explain you how to achieve it so for that let's say we have our application here this can be uh, this is a UI application okay so it can be a web application Android iOS application or Windows application or whatever it is okay so this is the application in which your users are interacting basically like as I mentioned before sometimes they might be clicking for good password or sometimes they might be uh, uh, ordering something like or purchasing something then we have to send an invoice email fine so here what is the better way is in the database so here I am just creating a small table in the database so I'm just mentioning this as okay email schedule table in the database okay <clears throat> so email schedule is for only uh, scheduling the emails for uh, completely managing our email services so what we used to do is the first column or the first field we need in email schedule is the email schedule ID so this should be this is a very important field I will uh, uh, explain you how we need to use this so this is a unique ID field which we uh, which we need in the table inside the table the unique ID field now the next thing we need is email type ID so this can be a constant a integer constant uh, field so in the application we can use say uh, some constant variables for this so uh, email type is basically to 
identify what type of email we have to send. As I told, in the single in a single application, we might need password reset, uh, then e invoice email, then uh, uh, some other emails as well. Okay, or some uh, uh, payment reminder email. So many requirements will be there. So for each kind of type of email, we will we can assign some way, uh, some integers like. For example, one is equal to password uh, reset email, two is um, uh, invoice email, whatever it is. So here you can use an integer field or any other string field or whatever it is that is up to your uh, uh, style of doing it. I used to use uh, integer variables here. So that will be completely constants and the application in constants I will mention what are all those uh, values are so as I mentioned one is equal to one is password reset and uh, two is invoice and three is uh, payment reminder email in that way okay now next next field what we can use is scheduled timestamp so this will be uh, this will be a date time field in which we can save uh, at what time this email is scheduled. Sometimes we may need to schedule the email to a uh, later date time. For example, if we need to send the email uh, tomorrow, then we can assign tomorrow's date time. Okay. And next is uh, schedule status ID. Sorry. So schedule status ID also will be an integer constant fields. Uh, here also you can use string or whatever constants you, you need. Uh, mostly I use uh, integer constants. So this for schedule status ID there will be multiple values like uh, scheduled, then processing, then uh, completed then error we have to uh, uh, take care of the errors as well sometimes there might be chances of uh, 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 there might be chances of receiving errors while sending email if all our configurations and everything even from address to address everything is correct then also there might be chances uh, if there is some connectivity issues or something so at that time we have to resend the email so uh, in this video or uh, uh, we are explaining how we can monitor all these things and do it in a more efficient way okay so these many values or these many constant values will come in uh, schedule status ID for it say uh, schedule scheduled will be one okay uh, so as I mentioned uh, I use integer constants so I used to uh, uh, give values like this completed is equal to 3 and error is equal to 4 okay so these many values may come in scheduled status ID now uh, next field what I use is processed timestamp okay at what time the process got completed so if we have these many fields in our database, we can completely uh, handle the email services or email schedules. Now, what we have to do is from the UI application, if the customer is clicking on for good password or some uh, uh, somewhere we need to send an email, then uh, what we have to do is we have to save this email schedule in the database so this is the next step okay so uh, if we save this email schedule in this particular table that will be a very uh, 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 a, a very uh, small process why because it won't take much time as you know, sometimes the emails, uh, sending email might take some time actually, but uh, uh, saving a data in our database won't take much time. It will complete immediately. So once it is saved immediately, you can uh, show a message to your user that uh, 
you will be receiving an email soon uh, to reset the password or something like that okay now once the email schedule is saved in the database the next process now we have to send the email so for that the better option is creating a service application which is running in our server okay all the time so we can create uh, here we have one more application so this is purely a service application if, uh, if you are uh, if your server is a windows server then you can create windows services in uh, uh, .NET and you can host uh, uh, you can deploy the service in your applic uh, in your server in services so uh, that service will handle the email schedules and send the email okay so if you are having a different uh, operating system in your uh, uh, server like if you are using Linux what you can use uh, what you can do is using dotnet core we can create same kind of service application like uh, a daemon a daemon application and you can save uh, sorry you can deploy it in a Linux server so in this service application normally the UI application once it is saved uh, the service application has to get the saved email schedule and process it so there are multiple options to do that normally i have seen people using a timer kind of uh, uh, thing and the, this timer will be checking the database the email schedule table in every one minute and checking whether there is any email with scheduled status id okay so if there is any thing which is in scheduled status it will take the email schedule and uh, process it sent the email so before sending the email they will change the schedule status to processing then uh, the email will get sent and once it is completed it will be changed to completed status id this particular field will get updated so if any error happens then the schedule status id will the value will be uh, 4 so, uh, that is uh, if any error happens it will be 4 okay so this is how the service application will work but uh, in my opinion instead of using a timer kind of thing mostly what I use is a separate messaging service something like RabbitMQ RabbitMQ is a very powerful messaging service which is having an ability to queue the messages so say an example if you if you if you want to mention that or if you need your server to process five emails at a time okay so your application might be getting lot many email requests lot many email schedules might be getting created in the database but at a time you need to uh, process only five emails these things can be done using RabbitMQ we can uh, RabbitMQ will queue the date uh, queue the uh, uh, requests and it will take five out of that queue and process it once the, the, the uh, that completed again it will take next five and process it so any of one that again completed again it will take next data and process it so in this way we can make this thing real time instead of using a timer so timer anyway we have to uh, in timer we can um, we have to assign the interval so for, say if we are assigning an interval of one minute or two minutes so every two minutes only it will uh, the timer will check the database and uh, process the email schedules so sometimes the users might have to wait some two minutes in order to get the email so to overcome that I suggest using some messaging services like RabbitMQ so here what we do is uh, the UI application will save the email schedule in the database okay once it is created this email schedule is created uh, we, uh, we can get the email schedule ID of this particular email schedule so what the next thing that uh, we have to do here is 
uh, publish a message to RabbitMQ. Okay, if you are using RabbitMQ, just publish a message uh, with this email schedule ID. That is sufficient. Just the ID is sufficient. So if you publish this uh, message to RabbitMQ with the email schedule ID. Now next thing in the service application, we all uh, we will return a we will we have to return a we have to write a code to listen or to, we have to subscribe for uh, uh, this particular message of uh, email schedule. So here we will be having a sorry here we will be having a function to subscribe email schedule and it will accept email schedule id as parameter okay so this rapid mq so what will happen is uh, Okay, uh, so here this UI application will send once the email schedule is uh, done this UI application will send the email schedule ID to RabbitMQ and RabbitMQ will send the email schedule ID to this service as this service is already subscribed for that particular queue or uh, in RabbitMQ we, we used to subscribe to a particular queue so uh, the service application will get this email schedule ID and in this service application once we get the email schedule ID we will get the email schedule details from the database and we will check where, what type of email type ID it is if it is a forgot password email email type then we will uh, process the email uh, by uh, sending a uh, by sending a um, random generated password or if it is an invoice type of email we will generate the invoice and send it uh, uh, um, to this particular user as an attachment or whatever thing we can do so this is a better flow what I suggest if we need to do it in a more efficient way and now one more thing I need to mention in this service application we will write one more code using a timer we will check for uh, email schedules which have status error that is four okay so for say we are having a timer with time interval uh, with interval we, which we have assigned some one minute or two minutes say two minutes so every two minutes this email schedule will check whether there is any email schedules which is having a status ID of four so if it is a status ID of four it will fetch the email schedule and uh, send the email again it will try to send the email again and in that way we can process a failed email again and again so here what we can do is if, if there might be chances of uh, failing uh, the failure of sending email because of invalid email ID or something so we don't need to try that particular kind of email schedules again and again so here what we can do is we can instead of fetching uh, all the emails which is having status of uh, error uh, status ID of uh, 4 what we can do is we can fetch the uh, email which is have uh, which is scheduled uh, before uh, 10 minutes and having a status ID of 4 we can give an and condition there so the schedule timestamp should be before 10 minutes and it is also having an error uh, also having a status ID of 4 so in that case we can resend we can try resending the emails so again if it is continuously failing again after 10 minutes we won't be uh, trying it so in that way we can handle that or else you can use one more field here uh, send count okay so each time the send count should be 
uh, or an auto increment one two three in that way and if we tried some five times then just leave it don't need to send again so in that way also we can handle this so hope you got the logic and the flow how we can handle this in a more proper way so share your comments uh, thank you